Today we're going to talk about how you can grow an abundance of edible and medicinal mushrooms at home. And you might be surprised how easy this actually is. You can do this indoors and outdoors, you can do it even if you live in the city, and it doesn't take a lot of time or money to get started. So what we're going to go over in today's video is the life cycle of a mushroom because this is essential for knowing how to grow it. From there we're going to chat about what it needs at its different stages, and then last we're going to look at where to grow and with what techniques so you can assess whether it'll work in your unique situation. Now before I dive into that though, uh, let me just introduce myself. So my name is Chris Gilmore and I run chrisoutdoors.ca and today I'm in the Wild Muskoka Botanicals kitchen. If you're into wild forage foods you got to check out Wild Muskoka. I'll throw the link down below. Beyond that the Chris Outdoors channel is all about helping people build their self-reliance as well as their connection with the land. So if you want to learn more about us you can check out chrisoutdoors.ca and you can also subscribe to this channel if you want more of that. My wife and I are able to grow an entire year's worth of mushrooms in a really small space. And with rising food prices, inflation, uh, supply chain issues, this actually gives us a lot of peace of mind. It's pretty amazing. Uh, beside me, you'll see some of the shiitakes that we grow and we actually dry them. Uh, so these are big bags and we freeze them as well. And we eat a ton fresh during the winter too. So the first thing that you really need to know to be able to grow mushrooms successfully is to actually understand the life cycle of a mushroom. And one thing that I was actually really surprised about when I first started learning this close to 20 years ago, the mushroom is not the organism. This is actually the fruiting body of a way larger organism, which is the mycelium. The mycelium is the part that you often don't see. So in this straw right here, uh, all of this little white thread looking stuff, this is the mycelium growing through the straw. When it's finished consuming the straw, the food source, then it puts up the mushroom uh, as the fruiting body, the mushroom releases the spore and that's how it propagates other surfaces and uh, reproduces itself. So a great way to think about this, you know, if you go to eat an apple off of an apple tree, the apple is not the organism. The apple tree and the root is the organism. The apple is just the fruiting body that allows it to reproduce. That's the same with the mushroom. So let's look at the different stages of the life cycle because it has different needs in each stage that you're gonna need to produce whether you're growing indoors or out. So the first thing that happens is these little gills on the mushroom, they release spores. And the spores are kind of like the seed, even though they're like a different organism or different mechanism. The spores then float and they'll hit whatever the substrate is that they're gonna grow on. And the substrate literally just means like the medium it's gonna grow on. So this straw would be the substrate in this example. So it hits the uh, substrate and we call this first stage host discovery. So it starts growing those tiny little threads of mycelium and it's basically just trying to figure out is this a suitable host? Does it have the conditions I need to actually grow here? And if it is a suitable habitat, then we move on to the next phase, which is called colonization. The colonization phase is when it actually spreads through the whole medium and it's basically consuming its food. It's eating the carbon there. So if you look at this straw right here, you can see all that white in there. That's actually mycelium that's growing all through the straw. This is actually flush multiple times and it's done. And then the very last stage, once it's colonized this whole area, then it's ready. It's consumed the food. It's time to reproduce again. So it shoots out another mushroom and the cycle repeats over again. So the next thing we need to look at is what do mushrooms actually need to grow? And it does change a little bit with each one of these life cycles. And the reason you need to understand this is because you're gonna to wanna to control those conditions, whether you're growing indoors or out. And that's what I'm gonna to get to in part three is how to actually do that in your unique situation. But what do mushrooms need? So first off, they need food. And food is basically some source of carbon. So if you're growing indoors, you know, it might look like growing on straw. Um, it might look like getting something like this, like wood chips. If you're growing outside, uh, it might look like growing in an actual log. So there's multiple different things that you can source out for food. After food, you're gonna need the right moisture content. So my, uh, maintaining moisture is absolutely key here. Generally, you want humidity from like 70 to 90% for mushroom growth, whether it's indoors or outdoors. And again, we'll chat about how to create that a little bit later on in this video. You also need light, and the amount of light you need actually varies depending on the life stage. So in this early stage, the host discovery, mushrooms need, or mycelium I should say, needs almost no light. Uh, if you think about a mushroom in the forest, when it goes and it lands on a log and it's doing that host discovery and the colonization, the mycelium is actually growing inside of the log. So it doesn't have any light at all. So mushrooms can do this phase with very little light, but to actually fruit, and then reproduce their spores, most species actually need indirect sunlight or they can grow under lights indoors at that part. So that's really important there. 
And then the last thing we need is oxygen and gas exchange. So kind of like humans, uh, oxygen in, CO2 goes out. In the host discovery phase, they actually don't need a lot of oxygen. They can grow in environments that are very low oxygen, but to actually fruit, we need to have a lot of oxygen and they need to be able to off gas. Now, the easiest way to get started is to actually go and buy yourself a mushroom growing kit. And these are pretty cool. I have some links down below in the comments that show you where you can buy mushroom growing kits and other supplies. And if you enter Chris Outdoors 10 at that link, you'll actually get 10% off. But a kit like this, you're gonna get two, three, maybe four flushes of mushrooms if you're lucky, and then it stops. And what I would like to teach you how to do is take this $30 kit, you know, approximately that you're gonna spend on it, and turn this into a year round supply of mushrooms and grow hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of mushrooms. What we actually do is we start with a little home grow kit like this, but then we take the mycelium out of there in the substrate and we inoculate it into things like straw, we put it into coffee grounds, we put it into logs, and we're able to actually repeat that process over and over again. So we have an unlimited supply for that same initial $30 investment. And I can teach you how to do this inside of our mushroom growers course. So if you want to go to themushroomcourse.com and check out the course there, inside of it, we actually get into how to grow indoors and out with multiple different species, multiple different techniques. We also get into wild foraging mushrooms and wild fungi ID, which is super, super fun. So we talk about how to identify mushrooms in the wild, uh, how to learn to forage safely, um, and just get way deeper into ecology, which is super fun. So again, if you would like to have a mentor to help walk you through step-by-step step how to make this a reality for you, check out the mushroomcourse.com and if you enter YouTube 30 you'll get $30 off. Now it's time to talk about where to actually grow mushrooms around your place whether it's outdoors or inside and what techniques best work in different environments. I'm going to start outdoors with today's video and here's a common uh, question that I often get people say hey Chris I want to grow mushrooms but I live in a place that's under snow for half of the year can I still grow mushrooms outside? So obviously you can see yes you can. So let's chat about needs for outdoor mushroom growing. Now this here is 20 logs and they're inoculated with shiitake mushrooms. And with these 20 logs, I produce a ton of mushrooms, anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds of mushrooms in a good season. And you can see that this is only taking up four by four foot. So you don't need a lot of space to actually grow a lot of mushrooms. Now I got a lot more logs than this, but just off of these 20 logs in a four by four spot, I can produce a lot. Now choosing the actual location is really, really important. So if we think back to what mushrooms need, need, moisture was a big one, that high humidity content. Now, ideal world is finding like a low spot on your property or human environment. So here I'm kind of in a low dip and I'm also right beside a little wetland. So that's ideal if you live on a homestead, but you might live in an urban environment or not have a lot of land. So what if you don't have that low spot? Well, then it becomes a shady spot. And yes, I did say that mushrooms need light, but they need indirect light. They don't want direct sunlight because direct sunlight will actually dry these logs out. So if you were to look up above me right now, we're underneath some balsam fir trees. So just finding a spot underneath some evergreen trees or even behind a shed or a house is ideal spot for growing your logs. Now with the logs, if you're not on a larger piece of property, like a homestead where you're able to be by a pond or a creek, because here, if it gets really dry, if I have a drought, I can actually throw the logs in the pond to get them moist again. But in an urban area, you might want to put it close to some place where you can bring a hose. So then if you go through a drought, you can, uh, you can spray some water on them, keep them moist. But usually if you're getting rain once a week, that's enough. Another location that you can grow outside is actually in garden beds or underneath vegetation. So there's this particular species called wine cap mushrooms and they actually will grow in straw or wood chips. So right here is a lilac bush and I have a bunch of elderberries planted around here. I've also planted wine caps right in my garden beds, like in the garden paths, underneath squash plants. And again, if you have cover above them, whether it's the lilac and elderberries or it's the leaves from the squash, it basically creates the shade um, and keeps the moisture in to be able to grow right in the ground with your wood chips or your straw. Next, we'll chat about indoor growing setups and how you could apply this to your unique growing environment. Now, the fun thing about indoors is you don't necessarily need a lot of space. You can do this in an urban apartment, you can do it in a house or out in the country, and this is totally scalable as well. You know, it could be as simple as that one little mushroom growing kit in the side of your house to a full-on room dedicated to growing an abundance of mushrooms. Now, if you remember the intro of this video, I said that at the different phases, mushrooms have different needs. So we're gonna focus on the colonization phase first. So imagine you've 
chose what your substrate is going to be. So in our case today, we're talking about straw. Uh, and this is straw that I got from a local garden center. I was able to buy a bale uh, and I go through a process to treat it. That's not what today's video is about. Um, but imagine you've got your substrate. Another one that I love for the urban environment is actually spent coffee grounds. Um, so I'll grow mushrooms on spent coffee grounds inside of mason jars. And that's a great beginner way to get started with mushrooms. So what are the needs when they're in that colonization phase? The most important one is going to be your moisture level, as well as preventing other contaminants from getting in there. Because when the straw, before it's fully colonized or before your coffee grounds are fully colonized, other contaminants, molds, bacteria, other mycelium from other species can get in there and outcompete your mushrooms. So how do you prevent that from happening? Well, the big part is one, uh, sterilizing or pasteurizing the medium or substrate you're growing in. Again, that's a whole nother video. And then the other part is actually just having it inside of a clean container that keeps the contaminants out. So for the example, when I'm growing in straw, the two ways that I like to do it is I'll grow inside of bags. And this bag just has the tiniest little filter on it there, which allows a little bit of oxygen in, a little bit of CO2 out. But during the colonization phase, it doesn't actually need a lot of oxygen. It can grow in a pretty low oxygen environment. So that's perfect. This bag, it keeps uh, the other contaminants out. But the other awesome thing about the bag is it keeps the humidity in. So for the fact that this this bag is sealed and has a tiny little filter, I basically don't have to do anything about the humidity. It's just there's enough in there already until it's ready to fruit. My other favorite way to grow inside is actually inside of five gallon buckets. So I'll drill holes in them and just like the bag, the five gallon bucket keeps other contaminants out but keeps the humidity in. The other one is temperature that's important as well. Uh, different mushrooms and different myceliums like different temperatures for ideal growing, but most myceliums will start growing around 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, beyond that, it's going to be dependent on the species and you can just look up what species you're growing there. Now during the colonization phase, another interesting thing is it doesn't need light during this phase. So you could actually take this bag of straw and you could throw it in a cupboard or in a closet. Uh, I could just leave it on the shelf in the back corner of the house. It's got a little bit of indirect light here. I could even cover it in a blanket. Actually a great place that people often put them is on top of their fridge with a blanket over top of it. Perfect place during that colonization phase. Now for the fruiting phase, the needs change a little bit. Now indirect light becomes really important and it needs oxygen to grow as well as the ability to off gas. So that's really important during this phase here. And humidity, sorry, as well is really important to this phase here because if it's too dry in your house, the mushrooms will start to grow and then they'll just dry out. So first off, if you have a room in your house that's more humid than other rooms, you know, you could grow, if you're growing in the coffee jar, you could literally do it beside your kitchen sink where it picks up on that extra moisture. You could do it in your bathroom, you know, sitting on a shelf in the bathroom because your bathroom's often a more humid spot or maybe down in your basement. What I find is in the summertime, uh, my house is often humid enough that I don't need to do anything special. Um, sometimes I'll just throw even a plastic see-through clear bag over top of my project and then that holds the humidity in in and of itself. But in the winter time, I find it's just too dry. When they start to fruit, they dry out right away. So what I'll do in the winter time is I will uh, either create one of those humidity tents or I'll grow inside of something called a monotub or make a growing chamber to grow inside of it. And this is probably the easiest is to build yourself a monotub. And this is great for like urban apartments, areas with small use. Um, and a monotub, you know, a real simple one, the essence of it is you get a plastic Rubbermaid or a plastic tub. You poke a bunch of holes in the side of it, which allows oxygen in and CO2 out. Um, sometimes people will put something like perlite in the bottom and pour water over it because the perlite will hold the moisture. But I'll actually just get a little dish of water and throw it in there and find it actually works as well. Um, sometimes I'll throw a little hygrometer in there, which measures the humidity. But what I do with the monotub is I'll basically now take my block. Once it's colonized, I'll take it out of the cupboard or off of the fridge, out of that dark spot. And I'll put it in here and I'll pop holes in it. By popping the holes in it, now you're allowing more oxygen in, more CO2 out, right? And I'm gonna put it inside my monotub, I'm gonna throw my roof on there, and now what's great about this is because it's inside of the tub, it's gonna maintain the humidity level. There's also a really good reason for this from a safety perspective though, and we should chat about that too. Because I mentioned that mushrooms, when they fruit, they release spores, right? And you don't want a large quantity of spores inside of your living space. This can actually make people really sick if you're doing it in quantity and over time. And I'd recommend 
recommend you watch our other video on mushroom safety when growing indoors. So I'll put the link for that below as well. So make sure you think about safety. Um, it's generally thought that, you know, if you're just doing one or two little blocks or bags, you could probably do it in a mono tub like this indoors. Now, the last thing I'll show you is my setup for a slightly larger setup and growing more quantity inside. So I've built this chamber over here. They're sometimes referred to as a Martha tent. Um, and all this is, is a plastic shelving unit. I actually don't have anything in here right now. I'm just about to start my next batch for the winter, but I've got a plastic shelving unit and I've just taken plastic over top of it here. So I've basically made a bigger version of the mono tub. Now I can take a tub like this, fill the bottom of it with water or the water and perlite, put it down on the bottom shelf. And then in my chambers above it, that's where I can have multiple different blocks growing there now. The other thing you'll notice in there is I have a little spray bottle. So I, again, I have my hygrometer in there and the hygrometer is just like a moisture meter. So I wanna keep it above 70%. So if I come and check on this and I notice it's dropping down below 70, I'll literally just take my little spray bottle, spray some mist into the air and that usually pops it right back up to 80, 90% humidity in there. So these chambers are great. But again, on the safety note, what I should mention, if I was to fill this whole thing up with fruiting blocks that are going, this is starting to get to the point where you should be concerned about safety, both for your own lungs and the amount of uh, mycelium and spores you're introducing even into your house, right? And I want to really caution that. So ideally a setup like this for a growing chamber, you should actually think about ventilation. So just like you would vent a shop tool because of the sawdust in your house, uh, I could put a hole in the side of this and basically make a vent tube that goes out my window with a fan. So if you're going to grow indoors, you should think about venting a larger quantity of mushrooms. That's for sure. Now, the reason I don't do that is I don't actually fruit in here. I'll put my blocks in here because I only grow one or two blocks at a time, but I cycle them. So I'll have multiple going. So I actually use this little chamber here for the colonization phase. I'll have one shelf one week. I'll do the next shelf the next week, the next shelf the next week. And then I'm able to cycle them for a constant flush of mushrooms all winter long. When they're ready to fruit, I actually take them out of here. But because I haven't even cut slits in, there's no mushrooms, there's no risk of the spores. Then I'll put them into my mono tub and I'll just fruit one or two bags at a time. So this allows me to actually grow a quantity inside in the winter time without having to invest in fancy ventilation and things of that nature. But again, make sure you watch the safety video on growing mushrooms inside. If you would like to have a mentor to help walk you through step-by-step step how to make this a reality for you, check out themushroomcourse.com. And if you enter YouTube 30, you'll get $30 off.